Good evening and welcome to Virtual virtual Vespers. That's kind of hard to say. Um, our devotional reading for tonight is going to come from 1 Kings chapter 19. It's verses uh, 9 through 13. When the Lord appears to Elijah, And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face, and he went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Have you ever uh, suddenly fallen down? You were just walking along, then all of a sudden you were on your back looking up at the sky. Um, it kind of sneaks up on you. Just there you are. That has happened to me before, and it's kind of startling. And um, I have found that sometimes that can happen spiritually, too. Um, I think when it happens spiritually, it sneaks up on you. It gradually comes, but maybe the re realization is sudden that you realize that um, you're very spiritually dry, that you are not in your walk with the Lord the way that you should be. Uh, and we set ourselves up for that sometimes by... Uh, not cultivating our relationship with the Lord, like Al talked about about two weeks ago. We need to do those small, everyday things that uh, keep our relationship with God intact, like Bible study and praying and meditating and just thinking about the things of God, those small, everyday things. And I've always had this thought in my mind <laughs> that if I had one of these really dramatic experiences like they have in the Bible, uh, one of those big miracles, that I would never waver. I would always have faith and I would always be close to the Lord if I could just have one of those really uh, dramatic experiences. You know the ones I'm talking about, like um, when uh, the children of Israel left Egypt and they were uh, in the desert uh, going toward the Red Sea and the Egyptian army was pursuing them and they were terrified and uh, they came to a dead end right there at the Red Sea. And there was nothing they could do. And God parted the waters. And they walked through safely. And um, then God took care of their enemies by letting the waves crash over the enemies and destroying them and protecting the children of Israel. And uh, or what about when Elisha was um, being pursued by the king of Aram who wanted to kill him? And uh, he had been looking for him and he found him in, in the city of Dothan. And... Um, the king of Aram sent his army to surround the city. And Elijah and his servant were standing out on the hill, and they saw this army surrounding them, and they, the servant was very afraid and uh, didn't know what they were going to do. And Elisha prayed to God and said, Lord, let him see what I see. And uh, the servant looked up, and he saw God's angel army surrounding them with chariots of fire. And that army was uh, defeated, and Eli uh, Elisha was... Uh, made safe and the servant too. Or what about Daniel being delivered from the lion's den or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace where the Lord appeared in the furnace with them and their clothes were not scorched and they didn't even smell like smoke when they came out, it says. All of these are such tremendous stories. I always felt like if something like this happened in my life, I would never waver again. I would just have such great faith. But my favorite story is the one that we read today, the, the one that I like the most of all the dramatic stories, is the story of Elijah's showdown with the prophets of Baal uh, at Mount Carmel. And I'm sure everyone is familiar with the story. Elijah's been hiding from Ahab and Jezebel, and um, he decides, to, I guess God uh, inspires him to come out, and he goes to the prophets of Baal, and he uh, says to them, why don't we build an altar to our gods? You build an altar to your god, Baal, and I'll build an altar to my god, the creator of heaven and earth. And whoever, whichever god answers by fire, then he is the real god. 
And uh, the children of Israel thought that was a good idea. The prophets of Baal thought that was a good idea. They thought this was a really good thing. So they, uh, the children of Israel had strayed so far that the, there wasn't even, the altar was torn down. So Elijah had to build the altar, and he and the prophets of Baal, they each got a bull for their, for their god. And um, the prophets of Baal, they prayed to Baal, and they danced around, and shouted and begged Baal to answer their prayer. They even cut they even uh, cut themselves. I guess their blood was a sacrifice, but nothing happened. But then Elijah steps forward and calls on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he says just this kind of a short prayer. And as soon as he is finished, fire comes down from heaven and it burns up the sacrifice. And not just the sacrifice, but the wood and the stones and the trench around the altar that was filled with water and even the soil below it were all consumed by this fire from God. And when that happened, uh, the children of Israel who were there watching, they fell prostrate to the ground and cried out, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. And then um, Elijah and the children of Israel, they kill all the prophets of Baal, not one is left. And you see such a great victory for the Lord and how the Lord so strongly presents himself. You would think that that would make you so strong for the rest of your life. But um, Elijah uh, becomes afraid. Um, King Ahab gets in his chariot and he rides back to Jezreel and he tells Jezebel what's happened. And uh, Jezebel is a wicked woman. And she... Uh, sends a message to Elijah that uh, what he did to the prophets that she is going to do to him, that, um, that he will be killed. Well, Elijah becomes very afraid, and he, he, he flees, and he takes his servant with him. Um, and before we get too critical of Elijah, I can't imagine the stress that he's been through. He's been hiding all this time from Jezebel and Ahab, and then he's got all the things that are happening with the sacrifice and the people around him. And maybe he doesn't really know for sure what God's response will be. And um, when you think of the physical stress on him, having to rebuild the altar, that probably took him a, a long time to, uh, to reassemble the altar and to kill a bull, cut it up, put it on the altar. This was probably a couple of days, I would think, at least, to do all this and prepare. So I can imagine that he was very physically and mentally and emotionally exhausted. So anyway, he and his servant uh, run from there, and they go to Beersheba, where Elijah goes out into the desert and sits down under a broom tree, and he falls asleep. An angel wakes him up and uh, says to eat and drink, and he gives him something. He says, because the journey is going to be great. And Elijah falls back asleep, and the angel comes back to him again and tells him to eat and drink again because uh, he's, he says his journey is going to be great. And so um, Elijah leaves there to go and hear from God. He travels to Mount Horeb, or Mount Sinai, um, the mountain of God, which is about 200 miles away. And it takes him 40 days and nights to get there. And when he gets to that mountain, he goes into a cave and spends the night. And uh, he knows that he's about to hear from God. And when he, gets up, when he awakes the next morning, um, and he's waiting to hear from God, there's this... Um, great wind that comes, and it blows the rocks in the mountain apart. Uh, it's a tremendous wind. And then there's an earthquake, and after that, there's a fire. And you see all these great and powerful things, but the Bible tells us that God was not in these things. He was not in the wind or the earthquake or the fire. And as things get quiet, then uh, Elijah hears a gentle whisper, and it says he covers his face, and he goes to the mouth of the cave, and waits to hear from God. So when I think about my desire to have that dramatic experience, and I read this story, it really tells me that I need to be quiet and listen for God, that he does not always come in some uh, dramatic fashion, that um, I need to spend enough time with God, that um, I recognize his voice. And when it comes as that gentle whisper and I recognize it for what it is, and I listen to what he has to say. And I, I pray for us, that each one of us, that we will find that time to spend so that we can 
hear from God in uh, all the gentle and quiet ways that he speaks to us every day. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that you would speak to us and that we would prepare our hearts and our minds to hear what you have to say. Help us as a church to seek your will in all that we do and to listen for your voice. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.